Hi, everyone. Can you, can you all hear me? All right, somewhat. OK. Um, I'm a very chill admission person. I'm actually going to sit down, and we're going to hang out for the next 30 minutes. Sound good? All right, perfect. Oh, that feels good after a long fair. Uh, well, it's nice to see all of you. Thank you for, for joining. Hopefully today has been helpful to kind of understand the different boarding schools. Um, there are so many incredible schools here. Uh, so my first piece of advice is what we look for. What I look for is you talking to as many schools as possible today. Um, there are some really cool opportunities um, at the different, different tables, and you're going to hear about those as you, ooh, as you do your research and you figure out what's the, the right fit for you. Today, I'm going to talk about actually two things. And if you know any admission person, we can talk forever. And I will do my best to be as succinct as possible so I can leave some time at the end to answer any questions you might have about this topic that I'm presenting on. So I think it really is important to know what these different schools look for, for sure. And even though we're all a little bit different in what we offer and our size of schools, what we might kind of value as our schools, at the heart of all of these boarding schools, there are some main characteristics that we definitely want to see no matter what school you apply to or talk to today. But on the flip side, I am gonna spend about five to 10 minutes talking about what you all should be looking for in this process as well, because this process really is about alignment, finding that school that you can align with that makes sense for you as a family and as a student, um, that's actually the most important thing. So yes, it's important to know what we look for, but you're 50% of the equation, and you really need to be um, open to say, what do I want out of the next couple of years for high school? And that goes for both students and parents and guardians as well, but we do need to make sure that this is a student-led decision, right? I am gonna start there, that if you are sitting in front of me right now as a student and you cannot wait for this opportunity and you're so excited about boarding school, you're in the right spot. If you're sitting here right now and maybe your wonderful mom or dad sitting next to you dragged you here, that's okay. If they continue to drag you all the way to the United States of America next fall, you might want to rethink what you got yourself into, right? We need to make sure that students are the ones that want to do this because when things do get tough, and when there is challenge, because there will be challenge, that's the real world, and that's any boarding school that's gonna be that, you can rest assured that, you know what? I chose this place. I chose this experience, and that's what's gonna actually get you through some of those challenging moments. So what do we look for? First and foremost, you have to love to learn. Super basic, I know, right? But you have to sit here right now and say, I'm curious, I have a true passion for learning. I get up in the morning, or most mornings, and I'm excited about my algebra class, and I'm excited about my English class. I'm excited to engage with my peers and learn, more, and learn something new every single day. That's at the heart of any of these boarding schools. We need to make sure that you're excited because it is a 24-7 experience. Learning at our schools, as you've probably heard today, does not just happen in the school day, not just from eight to three. It happens in the dorms. It happens on the di in the dining hall. It happens at the sports fields. It happens when you're doing theater productions. The learning is always happening, but does that excite you? Hopefully it does, and you wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't, but that's first and foremost that we're going to assess through your interview and through your essays um, and through talking to you at a fair like this today. So that's number one. The next one is engagement. This is a really, really important thing. You've probably heard today all the incredible opportunities that our schools have, right? Sports teams, arts programs, endless opportunities for classes. That's all well and good if you actually are willing to do those things. And we are gonna wanna make sure that you come to our campuses, and it's not just about academics, it's how are you going to engage in the endless opportunities that our schools have. 
things, right? So making sure in your application that you're talking about some of the current things that you might do and love right now, right? So we want to hear about if you're playing the violin and want to be part of our orchestra. We want to know that you're the soccer player and you're the goalie and we want to take part in that when you come to one of our schools. We want to know that you have an interest right now in environmental science. Don't forget to talk about those things because we want to know how you're going to engage on our campus. With that is a willingness to step outside your comfort zone. And you're going to hear that from every single boarding school that you talk to. I actually think that even being here today, even considering boarding school, is stepping outside your comfort zone, right? Most people don't consider this. If you really think about it, not many people around the world actually do boarding school. So by the fact that you're even interested in learning more and interested in applying to our schools is already stepping outside your comfort zone, but we want to see more of that once you come to our campuses. You might be sitting here right now saying like, oh, I love Shakespeare and I really want to do more English, and I want to do creative writing. I really see myself as a humanities person. That's great. All of our schools are going to be able to push you and make you better in those areas, but you're only, most of you, 13, 14, 15 years old, you actually don't know yet what you really want to do. And that's actually a good thing. You got to come to one of our schools and expand what you might not know what's out there, right? So you might sit here and say, I love history and I love humanities, but maybe you take that first psychology class and all of a sudden you're like, wow, neuroscience, here I come, right? Or I was never a really good painter, but now I took my first painting class, I love it, and now I'm spending four years in the studio. You just never know what's gonna happen, but you have to have that open mind and the willingness to put yourself out there and try something new. With that, all of these schools have students from around the world. That's really, really important to us. All of these schools, when we talk about diversity, we mean it in all ways. Geography, lived experience, perspective. Who you are right now, living in Thailand. I love Thailand, by the way. Love it. Best food ever. Is going to be very different than where I just was in Singapore. It's going to be very different than I was in Dubai a month ago, than a kid from Los Angeles, California, and a kid right in Connecticut, right? So we want you to come to our campus and bring your own perspective and culture and lived experience, but at the same time, be open to others, be open to difference. I always say at our school, you are living and learning amongst difference every single day. It's pretty cool to do at 14 or 15 years old, but we need to make sure that you're being respectful of difference, you're compassionate towards others, and that you have integrity for yourself. So character really matters in this process. It's not just one thing gets you into any of these schools. All of us are holistic in our approach because at the end of the day, we're building a community. We're building a family away from your family. This is not just school. This is really a community, right? So we're looking at how are you going to be as a roommate? How are you going to be discussing topics with friends from around the world at the dining hall table, right? Are you open to learning from difference every single day? We're going to look for those things, all of our schools in our application processes. I think the last one, and I'll get to my next point, um, you heard me already say that these schools are going to challenge you. They're going to push you. Right? That's actually the point of going. We want to have, make sure you're outside your comfort zone. Are you, do you have that resiliency to get through that challenge too? Right? There are going to be some tough moments. We're going to be there to support you for sure. Right? We need to make sure that there's that support system in all ways, advising system, residential life, you name it, and international student uh, directors. We have all that support system. But... There are going to be some times where you have to get through challenges, academically, personally, and everything in between. Do you have that resiliency to get through those times? So those are some of the main things that we're going to look for in the application process. But I also think it's important to say, what should you be looking for in this moment in time? As you visit these different schools and talk to the different representatives, we all sound great. 
right? We kind of start to all sound alike, right? What differentiates the different schools? And that's where these, the good questions come in from you. Um, so think about academic alignment. What kind of learner are you right now? Do you love discussion-based learning? Do you love project-based learning? Do you like collaboration? Or are you more of someone that likes to memorize and sit in a row and take a single test and only hear from a teacher at the, at the front of the classroom? Think about that. How does a school, ask the question to the school, how do you approach teaching and learning? Every school is gonna be a little bit different. Some schools teach in one singular way that's how they view education. Other schools don't. What works best for you is gonna be important. What do schools offer academically? Talk, ask them, what kind of classes do you have? How many classes do you have? How many classes am I allowed to take? Some schools you take five courses, some you take six, some you take seven. How does that impact your experience at one of our schools? So think about also individualized programs. Do you have signature programs? Do you have things that allow me to dig deeper into my academics? Or do you have just a lot of things on the surface? There's not a right or wrong answer to that, but you have to think about what am I looking for academically and what aligns best with who I want to be over the next few years at a high school. You should be asking, how does the advising system work? Every school has advising. Every school does advising differently. Right? How do you actually take care of me when I'm on that campus? Who's my go-to person? For parents, you should be asking, who is my point of contact? How many points of contact do I have? When can I come to campus? When can I not come to campus? How many times a year does my child come home so I can see them, right? Ask about those different things. Ask about the daily schedule. This is a really, really important part and feature of every single school you will look at. And every single school here has a completely different daily schedule. For sure, right? How does that daily schedule align with what you want academically? What does it mean to have Saturday classes versus no Saturday classes? What does it mean to have free periods versus no free periods? Is advising part of the daily schedule or not? There's all these really in-depth questions that you should be thinking about to, again, help you align best with the type of school that you want. And then lastly, it's just about culture. What kind of culture and vibe of school do you want? Every school is a little bit different. Some schools have dress code. Other schools don't have dress code. Some schools have, he has a dress code, look at him. Tie, always has a tie on, this guy, Westminster. <laughs> right? How does Saturday classes play a role in the vibe of campus, in the culture of campus? How does location play a role in the culture of that campus? Is there a town? Is there not a town? There's no right or wrong answer. It's all about what makes sense for you as a student and as a family and what is exciting to me. And then I'll end with this before going to questions. At the end of all of this, all these opportunities, it's all about happiness and fulfillment, right? I'm looking at parents in this moment. When you had your wonderful children sitting next to you, you probably weren't thinking about Chote Rosemary Hall in that moment, right? You were probably thinking of, I want my kid to be happy in life and fulfilled in life. If you can concentrate on that, and what school is going to make me the happiest, you will find success. Hands down, you will find success. It doesn't matter the name, doesn't matter the ranking, it matters is where can I be my best authentic self for the four years, three years, however many years. All right, sound good, happiness, fulfillment. Cool. What questions do we have? Again, I could talk a lot, so watch out. Yes. Oh, and by the way, it's not about Chout. It's about boarding school. So we ask no, no Chout-specific questions, because I am just about boarding school right now. Even though Chout's wonderful. <laughs> yes. I want to know how, how our boarding school, like, like uh, I want to know how our boarding school gonna do with, like, a student are sick and, like, 
they like uh, normally they go to a hospital in their country, but they are really sick and need to go to a hospital in the U.S. and like they might uh, need to contact for some information in the school that the student used to go and like how our boarding yeah. school gonna do. Yeah, so all of our s schools have health centers. So we all have um, uh, medical directors, nurse practitioners. Um, so we make sure that our kids are staying healthy, safe in all ways. We also have counseling departments for mental health as well. And then if it's a larger thing, right, if you unfortunately break a leg or something like that, we're all, most of us are close by to hospitals and have those connections to make sure that you're, you're safe. So you're not, under, you're not by yourself, but you need to make sure that you're staying healthy, for sure. Yes. Go for it. When like a boarding school says their test optional, does it actually like mean that they don't weigh students when they send SSATs or ISCE scores? Yeah. Um, I can speak for, I know for us for sure, but I would say any school that's test optional. When we say test optional, we truly mean test optional. I never sit, and I run every committee, I never sit in the committee, and if I don't have a test score, I don't say, hmm, something's up. No, never. And never have I said, oh, I wish I had that test score. No, there's so much more to an application than a test score. What you can do, in my opinion, this is Mr. Beaton talking, what you can do for three hours on a Saturday morning is not indicative of success, in my opinion, right? It cannot tell me, are you resilient? It cannot tell me, are you compassionate? It cannot tell me, um, are you a self-advocate? It cannot tell me how you can get through that challenge. The only thing it can tell me is, did you study for that test? And do you know how to take a test, right? So we're gonna look at so much more, and that's for test optional or schools that are test required. It's not just about that test score, it's about the whole holistic part of you. Because again, we're building a community. Every school is trying to build a community, it's not just about one thing. So our process is not gonna be just about one thing as well. So if it's test optional, we do mean it. And if it's test required, it's not going to be a make or break part of the application for you at all. Thank you. You're very welcome. I think right here. Oh. What can you gain from the boarding experience, like apart from independence? Ooh, I love that. Um, I first want to say about independence, you will gain independence and freedom to a certain extent. Right, you have to remember, there are more eyes and ears on you than ever before, right? At a place like Cho, you have 130 teaching faculty that live on this campus. That's the same for a lot of these other boarding schools too. So yes, you are gonna have independence for sure, um, but not full college independence. There's a time and place for that. It's not for 14 year olds. What else are you gonna gain? You're gonna gain a global perspective more than any place you've ever been at any of these schools. You're gonna gain um, how to be a true self-advocate and have a voice for yourself. That's something that's really, really important at these schools. Um, we want you to gain in that confidence, gain in having that voice so that when you leave that, when you leave one of these schools, you are the most prepared to take on the challenges, not just of college, but actually of the real world. You're also gonna gain a lot of way, a lot of skills of how to be a collaborative learner, right? I'm not trying to age any student here, right? You're only like 14 years old. But when you go to the real world, you are never doing anything in a silo. No matter what job you take, you are always having to collaborate and reach a goal together. That's what you're gonna get at these boarding schools. Chances to collaborate amongst kids from different backgrounds to achieve different goals, that is a huge skill that our schools are really gonna help get you to as well. There's a lot other ones, but those are some of the main ones I can think of. Helpful? Cool, good question. Wow, the parents are quiet. That never happens. <laughs> Go for it. Um, I wanna know like alumni interviews versus like actual admissions officer interview, is it like different, like way differently? No difference. Um, 
At a place like us, we have to have alumni interviews because we just have a lot of applications and we can't, I, Mr. Beaton can't be cut 10 different ways. So um, we need to make sure that we have enough to go around. But there's, if you have an alumni interviewer, there's no difference in terms of how we evaluate, how we view your application. Um, I actually think it's kind of fun to have an alumni interview in my, in my opinion. Because at the end of the day, Mr. Beaton is selling the school, right? I'm the salesman of Chote Rose Murray Hall. Everyone else here is a salesperson. The alumni did it, lived it, went through the challenges, and still love these schools enough to give back to their school five years out, 10 years out, 15 years out. I actually think you're pretty lucky when you get an alumni interview, in my opinion. But how we evaluate, no difference. Thank you. Did you have an alumni? <laughs> did you have an alumni interview? Um, not for a show. Oh, okay. Last year I did like admissions officer interview. Gotcha. Cool. Good question. Anything else? I could talk all day. There's a parent. Here we go. I try to make you all laugh sometimes, you know? I try to be funny. Hi. Uh, Hello. My son is in the UK right now. He will, fin he will go to the A-level next year. How difficult is it for him to move to the US? Is Good question. Um, what you have to keep in mind is at all these schools, we have kids coming from every single educational system you can think about. UK system, systems here, public schools in America, charter schools, Catholic schools, religious schools, homeschooling, and they all find their way at, at any of these schools, for sure. So I would not worry too much about like, oh, I didn't have the American system, so I'm not gonna do, no. Like, you're still learning. <laughs> you're still gaining knowledge. You're still having to do homework. You're still having to do all these things. I would not worry too, too much about what system you come from. We're gonna work with the family to make sure that we're doing a good job of course placement, what we count towards courses, um, and making sure you're placed in the appropriate classes, depending on what your background looks like coming in. Okay, I talked to two schools today and they both said that he should be repeating grade 10. Um, that is a case-by-case -case basis. Um, repeating works for some. I call it reclassifying, by the way, because you don't really repeat anything. Um, reclassifying is a way that you can um, be at one of our schools for a little bit longer. It gives you a little bit longer of a runway as well. For some kids, it makes sense, for sure. For other kids, it doesn't. So it really is a case-by-case -case basis, but it's good to ask the school and have them talk to you a little bit about like your individual um, child, for sure. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, I like, I've been looking to like the instructions or like the uh, requirements of many prep schools, and the uh, the taste optional section like they didn't mention about AP or like anything like that. So. I want to know if it's okay and is there any like way for me to submit other uh, standardized taste scores? Yep, so um, most schools will, um, will take, depending on what grade you're applying for, if you're applying for ninth grade or 10th grade, it's usually the SSAT or the ISEE. If you're applying for older grades, it's gonna be the ACT or the SAT. Um, if you have AP scores, most of our school, you can submit them, but Full transparency, we're not really worried about AP scores. Also, a lot of US boarding schools have actually gone away from APs in general. Like we're, We don't do APs at our school. Um, so if you want to submit them to show just show something, you can. But um, you don't have to. No. Yeah. We have five uh, minutes. Thank you. Who else? If not, I can get my coffee and go back to my table. Yes. Uh, how the role of the parents to support our kid in the admission? How do parents support their children in admission? It's a good question. I think just by coming here today, you're supporting your kid, right? <laughs> Showing them that you're open to this. Because I don't actually think, correct me if I'm wrong, parents, I don't think anybody actually wakes up in the morning and says, yes, I want my 14-year-old going away from home earlier than I thought. Right, but you do it because you want them to be happy. You do it because you want them to have a transformative experience. 
so you're willing to let them go a little bit earlier because you want to see them have the best time that they possibly can. So even just doing that is supporting your kid. I think another way to support your kid, they're smart, listen to them. Right? I know that you're gonna have wonderful opinions and you should still have your opinions because you, because you know them well. But again, where they end up should be up to them because they're the ones, they're gonna be flying across the world and living on these campuses, right? You're not the one living there. You probably wanna live there sometimes because they're pretty nice, but you're not gonna be the ones doing it. So really listen to your kid, let them be their authentic selves, let them really drive this conversation and this process, but you should still be asking them questions, right? When they say, oh, I really like that school, that's great, but like, what about that school? Can you tell me a little bit about like, what came to mind right, when you visited? One of the best things I tell families, um, especially if you visit our schools, I do think it's important to visit if you can. Um, a lot of us do well, obviously tours during the fall, but all of us do if you are admitted. We all have admitted student like, days on our campuses. So if you can't get to campus now, but if you get in and want to come later, that's great. But what I always tell families, when you leave that campus, do not say a word. Do not give your opinion. Let your child talk. Let them give their opinion first. Because if you go right in, be like, blah, 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 I love, and it taints their opinion of the school. Because they say, oh, well, I guess my parent didn't like it, so I guess I can't like it, right? Let them talk. Let them have agency. That's a cool thing about this process. For all of these students in the room, for the first time, you probably, is my guess, you have a say in what you want next. It's pretty cool, right? You have agency in what kind of school do you want? What don't you want? What kind of vibe do I want? Um, and that should be really, really exciting. So let your kid do that too. Yeah. And then give them a hug. See? Nice. Love it. Cool. Anything else? We're good. You have a lot of questions. He was at my table before. He has like 10 of them. Oh, uh, Give you a hard time. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, I also want to know that will I have a chance to work with the professors or the teachers in the school? Like if I'm interested in like that research, will like if it, is it possible for me to like have a chance to work with them so I can learn more about the topic that I'm interested in? Yes. Is that good? Yes. Now, in all honesty, think about this. I'm gonna end this, I'm gonna end it here. You have to think about boarding school in this way. Teachers live where they work and live with teenagers. Think about that. No other career, no other job in this world does both of those things, except for the crazy people like Mr. Beaton and everyone else here, right? Because we want to make sure that our kids have transformative experiences. That when you want to dig a little bit deeper, you have your teacher there. When you need support, you have your teacher there, right? When you need help with a math homework assignment right now at your school at eight o'clock at night, you probably have two options. Email your teacher, and they probably won't get back to you until the next day. Not, not, nothing against them, they're just off the clock. Or you're asking mom or dad, can you help me with algebra two? And they're like, I have done algebra two in 20 years. I have no idea. At a place like any of these you're gonna see, you have instantaneous help. Your math teacher might live in your dorm. Your math teacher might live in the dorm next to you and is holding an extra help session. You might have 20 other kids in your dorm that are all struggling with the same English paper and now all of a sudden, you're in the common room working on that paper together. That's what you get from a boarding school that you just can't replicate, in my opinion, at a day school. There are great schools out there. It's not, you'll never hear Mr. Beaton say better. I don't think we're better than other schools, whether it's Choate in other places or boarding school versus day. We're just different and unique. And is that difference and unique appeal to you? But you're gonna get a lot out of your experience. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for spending, is it Sunday? Yeah, it's Sunday. Thanks for spending Sunday here um, and come around our tables and hopefully we'll see you um, around. I hope this was helpful.
All right. Thanks, all.